Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to loop through a list. This is a very common type of design pattern you'll come across in programming in general. So if you have a list of things that you want to do something to each item in the list. So if you start by, or if you haven't already downloaded the loopdrills.aia file, you want to open that up into your projects and we used screen one for a previous video on the for each loop and we're going to reuse this same file but we're going to go to screen two right and screen two looks like it's the same as screen one it pretty much is we have a label for our output only now it's a bigger label or it takes up a bigger space and then we have our apply button and if you go into the blocks mode we have a list that's already set up for you, so you don't have to create it. And you can see it's just a list of the days of the week. And what we're going to do here is when the apply button is clicked, we're going to clear the text out of the output label. We're going to loop through the days of the week and display the text from our list in the output label. So we'll begin with, since we already have our list set up, we need an event handler that's going to start everything. So I'm going to go into the apply button and grab when the apply button is clicked. And we're going to set the output label to an empty string. So let's set output label text to empty. Right, and next we want to loop through our list. So loop structures, again, are in the control blocks. And you can see here is a loop specifically for working with a list for each item in the list. So I'm going to grab that block and snap it in here. Now we need to tell it what list to use. Now we only have one list, and it's not going to automatically assume to use days of week. So we're going to be specific and come up here and grab a get for our days of week list. So whatever we put into this do block, it's going to do what's in here for every item that's in the list. So it's going to start with Sunday and do whatever we tell it to do with Sunday. And then whatever we tell it to do with Monday. So it's going to keep repeating what's in this do block as long as there are items in this list. So let's set the output label to print out the names of the items that are in our list. So let's go to output label, set output label text to, and similar to what we did in the previous example, so let's take, we're going to set the output label text to item. So it's going to start with Sunday and put Sunday in the label and it's going to come back through the list. Is there something else in the list? Yes, there is Monday. So let's put Monday in there. So let's test this. We'll click the apply button and we end up with Saturday. And again, it's just like the previous example when we were working with the for each number. Right? It starts with Sunday, and then it replaces it with Monday, then it replaces it with Tuesday, replaces it with Wednesday. So the last thing that's in there is Saturday. So if we wanted to see the whole list together, we need to use a join in our text block. So we're going to join whatever is in the output label already. So output label text with the item from our list. Right? And if we run it this way, here's what we get. Right? All of our items running together, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we can join another item in here. We could put, if we grab another string, we could put a uh, space in there. Right, so actually you want to type in a space. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so now we have spaces in there. What if we wanted these to be on a different line? 
there's an easy way to do that. We can use what's called an escape character. So in here, instead of a space, I'm gonna put in a backslash N. Backslash N represents a new line character. So it's like pressing enter or the return key. So it will put things onto a different line. So let's test that out. All right, so now we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, we can do more than just print out the value. We could do something to change the value of our variable. Let's say, for example, we want to take the days of the week and make them all uppercase. So that means let's set item, right? Item, because when it goes through here the first time, Sunday gets assigned to item. So we'll say we're going to set Sunday to, and let's come in here to the text. There's a lot of cool things we can do with text. Let's take the uppercase. Let's set item to uppercase. And variable item. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, now everything is uppercase. And then there's also a down case. So if we apply that, then as it goes through the loop, it makes everything lowercase. So we can add more things into here and whatever we put in the do block is what it's going to do each time it loops through one of the items in the list. But looping through a list can be a very powerful skill to have. Say for example, we have a bunch of image sprites in your game and you want to loop through all of those sprites and position them randomly. And actually there's a video that I have that demonstrates how to do that. So we can loop through, if this was a list of the image sprites, we could loop through the list of image sprites and then in here, tell it to place it in a random position on the screen. So hopefully this will help you to understand a little bit more about loops as well as how to use a looping structure with a list.